From all the way from South Africa, we have our boys, Arnu Griff and Tobang Mulao. Forgive me for mispronouncing your names. I'm American. Hey, what can I say? Season 4, Blood and Water is out right now. Watch it on Netflix. Today we dive in deep and we're talking about relationships, undeniable talent. We explore their journey as actors and challenges they face and triumphs they overcome. And we celebrate them along the way. Check out this conversation. Sorry. You know, it's really hard to say other continent names because we're American. Yeah. So <laughs> I always try to like give people a nickname that's for it, and I never try that's to like dis yeah. like disrespect you by calling yeah. you not your name. Our, our nickname is Saudi South Africa. Oh, okay. Saudi. 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 Yeah. Saudi. Saudi. Oh, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so we're from South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Tabang Mulaba. Mm -hmm. um, oh, sh my turn. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? Uh, thanks for having us, first yeah, of all. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm uh, Arno Grief. Um, I think it's easier to pronounce as Arno. Yeah, Arno, uh, okay. Arno Grief, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and we from South Africa. We actors from that side. We mm -hmm. were on a show called Blood and Water, yeah. um, which was, uh, to plug ourselves, one of the biggest shows to come out of South Africa on onto Netflix. Mm -hmm. And we, we've we decided to come to the, the city of dreams oh, to pursue yeah. some opportunities. Just get a taste of what LA got. Just see, exactly. what's, yeah. see what's happening Realize this side. Yeah. So what do you think so far of your, uh, of America, the capitalist yeah. is the energy? Is it flowing through you yet? I think what's cool is like, we grew up watching America mm -hmm. as children, you know, on TV, you, you knew more about America than you did about your own country mm -hmm. um, because you yeah. looked at America, you watched American shows, shows. the whole time. Right. So it feels familiar. Yeah, it yeah, feels yeah. like I've been here before. It feels like we know, yeah. we know this place. That's the crazy thing about America is like, we don't have that with other countries. Mm. Yeah. We because don't have we an don't... understanding of what Africa or South Africa looks like from your lens. Right, we just know it as a continent, and yeah. there's maybe some dystopian yeah, <laughs> that's going be, on there. Walking around with lions, and right. stuff. yeah, yeah exactly. it's just a regular perception about what South Africans look like and perceive themselves as. Yeah. We all know about apartheid, and like, is it still happening over there? <laughs> like, se right. segregation, what's going on? So, but we want to also, I want to speak to the fact of before Blood and Water, mm. yeah, what were you guys doing? And where were you at in that? Individually, time? of Individually. course. Yeah. So yeah, we can start with you. Start with you. Like, like the work prior to that. Yeah. Or? So the work prior to that and the mindset. Mindset. Of like, where did you want to go in life? We, we was it a, always landing a TV show? Was it? We we was having this conversation before uh, yeah. about the mindset. So yeah, yeah. starting the journey about the art of pursuing and what kind of pursue. Why why did you want to pursue this industry? I just, I just really fell in love with it, man. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I started out as a model, uh, okay. right, and then I started like booking commercials and and all that stuff. So I kind of felt like, you know, what I, I could really get used to this. You know, right. I really want to do this. So after I graduated, I, you know, gave my parents the piece of paper to say, "Hey, look, I've graduated. I've done what you guys wanted me to do. Can I just have the year?" To like follow my passion and do what I want to do. And mm -hmm. then, you know, they were like, okay, we're giving you a year after that. You're going back to school. And then, yeah, that year just popped off, you know. Yeah, that's... The first year you, you were booking stuff as a model or... No, 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 no. So okay. I was doing the modeling while I was in uh, college. Oh, okay, university. okay, okay. Yeah, so I was studying, obviously, what they wanted me to do, right? Okay. And then from What there, was that? That was... Um, so... I, I got accepted for logistics, but oh. I, I initially applied for architecture. Okay. Right. So the plan was to change while I'm in the system of the college to, right. you know, the initial, you know, architecture. And then mm -hmm. that never happened. So I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to complete logistics and supply chain. I kind of loved it as well. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, while I'm doing this, let me try and get my name out there. Mm -hmm. by doing modeling stuff and and commercials and then that's where like the passion for it really like started blossom yeah and what is your first taste of success felt like and what was that job hmm am i allowed to drop names like, yeah I mean, drop, please i want to yeah. hear all the tea for me it was it was uh this is i don't know if you guys have this brand nivea okay. oh, yeah, 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 yeah 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 so that for me was like okay you know what 
there's some some good stuff here. Right. Hopefully more. And that was a ca- campaign. What was the job? Yeah. That, that was a uh, an ad. An TV ad. ad. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah, and it played um, for a year. Across the whole country. What was that social impact like when you first booked yourself. a job and you seen yourself and then your friends seeing you? How that affect you? It's like it really it, it changed my life. You know, yeah. people were like, "Oh, you that Nivea guy? Hey, can we have some Nivea everywhere?" <laughs> right. We're trying to get some deodorant, or right. lotion, or whatever. But yeah, it really it really changed my life for the better. You know, mm-hmm. I was able to do some of the stuff that I've always wanted to do. Right. You know, we live in a world where if you want to start something, you got to have a bit of capital for that so that kind right. of like helped with that so yeah and that was like your first taste of success into the industry yeah i'd say yeah <laughs> and Arnold, where were you at during the initial stages of your, your career so i i started out um i was in high school and a friend of mine's mother suggested i take drama as mm-hmm. a subject at school and before that i never really cared too much about it and decided, okay, well, let's try it. Let's let's see what it's about. I love always performing in front of people or being the, the entertainer, being the class clown, making jokes, all of that. So once I started and got the opportunity to like perform in front of people the whole time, I just loved it. It was it felt like my 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 happy space mm-hmm. where where I felt I needed to be. And luckily I had a drama teacher who started sending me to auditions while I was still at school. Wow. And he started investing quite a lot into the students. Um, so by the time I was 18, I'd, I'd done about like 50 auditions for commercials and little, you know, little arcs on shows. So what is that audition process like in South Africa? It's basically the same. You go into a room. Yeah, exactly the same as here, except there's, you know, I think here you audition with like hundreds of other people. Right. That's how it's maybe like 20 people. Mm. Uh-huh. But back then, because I was still in school, my dad had to come pick me up from school while I'm still in my school uniform, <laughs> wow. take me there. And I get there and everyone's like 21, 22. Mm-hmm. They've already studied a degree in drama and I'm standing there like, <laughs> okay, cool. So <laughs> what's up? This thing out. What's <laughs> up? The casting director would be like, how old are you again? No, I'm 17. I'm here for mm-hmm. the role. Switch off the camera, turn around. He's like, yeah, do your thing. Cool. Right, right, um, right. So I went through, I went through like two years of that. And then at the end of high school, I booked my first job on a soap, on a mm-hmm. soap opera. That soap side. opera is that? Yeah, yeah. In South Africa, that's massive. Like that's the yeah. that's yeah. the pinnacle of acting. Yeah. If you yeah. if you if you are um, uh, what's it, a full time character on a on a soap. Yeah. And so, would you book the guest star? Or? So it started out. I got a three month contract just as a like small supporting role. Okay. And then after about two months, they're like, okay, cool. We're gonna give you another three months. And then another three months after that. So I ended up spending the whole year there. Um, but they started off with three months just to see, like, what can you actually do? And I remember after the first week, one of the directors came up to me. He's like, yeah, we made a mistake. Like, Whoa, <laughs> so, yeah. really? Because I was so, I had no idea what I was doing, you yeah. know? Yeah. And also, I grew up... All, at school, they kept telling you, like, you know, film or camera is like small acting. This isn't the theater. Yeah. yeah. And I was so, I was You're so, so small in your presence. You're yeah, like, yeah. not even moving. Yeah. I'd come into the scene. I'm like, hey, can I get a coffee, yeah. please? Yeah. The director's like, give me some energy. Hey, can I get some coffee, please? And it kept on going like that. Do I'm you so... want to say what soap this is? Or we shouldn't know. The, the show We're is pull up called. The clip. And here it is, right here. Check it out. <laughs> you won't find it. You won't find it. The show is still running. It's still one oh, of the yeah. biggest, biggest shows. Um, in the Afrikaans market in South Africa. Mm-hmm. So I did a lot of Afrikaans work, mm-hmm. um, which is a local language in, in South Africa. And only up until the point of blood and water, I'd done Afrikaans stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was about to quit acting before blood and water. I started a production company, um, you know, shooting corporate videos, interviews, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And realized that I'm going to need to decide where, where's, where am I going to commit? Mm-hmm. I need to commit full time mm-hmm. to one thing because the business can't grow yeah. if I'm off acting every couple of months on something something small. Right. And I was about to quit and then the call came in for for Blood and mm-hmm. Water which just like transcended everything mm-hmm. before that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, did you face any resistance being with a shade of color of your skin yeah. like going to these auditions? And they're saying, hey, maybe, or you might think that's a competitive edge. No, so I, so I guess the reason why I did Afrikaans work up until that point is because it's predominantly spoken by white Caucasian people in South Africa, right? Oh, okay. Um, so it was actually a lot more difficult to get into English work because that was centered more around black 
people in South Africa, mm-hmm. um, which is yeah, blood and water was <laughs> blood and water was incredible because there was one white character on the show, and like I could I could actually book that. Right. Um, yeah, but but up until that point, the only opportunities I really had was in in Afrikaans work. You you're saying Afrikaans like? Yeah. Can you break that down to, for us? Because most Americans don't know what, what the hell is that. That's Afrikaans. the local like, language. Yeah. So yeah. so Afrikaans is a mix of of Dutch, um, but of German, but of English. Um, oh, okay. It originated in South Africa um, as the you know um, explorers came to South Africa, founded there. Initially, Jan van Riebeek came to South Africa, which is, I probably shouldn't speak a lot about that because it's a contentious, oh, okay. <laughs> contentious subject. Obviously, the, eventually the country got colonized as well. Right. But Afrikaans um, existed out of the people who started farming in oh. South Africa. And that's natively all you guys speak that language. No, no, no. So oh. I... I speak Afrikaans, but Tabang is Zulu. Yeah, yeah Zulu. I, I, I can speak Afrikaans because I, I had it as a language in, in high school, but not everyone predominantly yeah. speaks so, it. We've so got, we've got 11 of official languages yeah, in South Africa. Oh, I think yeah, 12 yeah. now. I think sign language has been added as well. So it's yeah. 12, 12 official languages. I think you guys are language. more literate than us Americans. We speak English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you know it, what? Yeah. We have maybe oh, three we, languages. We got slang, yeah. English, <laughs> black <laughs> so, yeah, no, no. How many languages is he? You I speak? can speak six. Uh, let, me, let me count: Sutu, Zulu, Tswana, and English Afrikaans. So five. Five languages. Yeah. That's crazy. Now, yeah. as far as like speaking, is it like fluently speaking, and you can like translate, write, read, is, or is it just conversational? Uh, I think it's mostly conversational. Mm-hmm. I can write a bit of Sutu and Zulu as well. But Zwana is a bit tricky, but I, I can definitely respond in here what you're saying. How right. did you learn all those languages? So they pretty much, they're almost the same. Like Sutu and Zwana are almost the same. It's just like, um, you know, uh, distinctive differences mm-hmm. in that, but it's it's almost the same. Now, being an African native, you already closer to your heritage. What about you? Do you know like your heritage history? I have no idea. Mm, I have really? no idea. Yeah. The thing is, also, I don't look a lot like my parents, so I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. And, <laughs> really? And find you out, find out, you're <laughs> find, <laughs> find out where I really come from. Right. Um, but right. I haven't explored that really. I've I've asked my parents like, Yo, what's up? Where do we come from? Right. Yeah. Um, and then. Don't mention it. they don't know they don't really know it's not not right. something that we really explore that much but the only logical explanation is we would have come from the dutch yeah. settlers that eventually came to south africa but there were a lot of french huguenots that came there as mm-hmm. well so it's like a mix of french um dutch portuguese um and then uh, yeah um the bushman people that were in south africa as well mm-hmm. um, which we refer to as as well not referred to. You get koi koi, but now we have colored yeah. people in South Africa as well. So that mm-hmm. that was a mix um, of different races as well. Did you guys yeah. like form cliques in high school? It's like nah, 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 I'm Zulu over here. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, what, what was that experience like growing in South Africa? You know, because is there a separation between black people? Yeah, it is kind of tribal. Okay, mm-hmm. it's it's you know the Zulus will stick to the Zulus, and you know Sutus will stick to the Sutus, but. You know, how about is, the R news? Huh? About the R news? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, because I was Afrikaans, mm-hmm. I went to an Afrikaans high school as well, and we were predominantly white school. Yeah. You know? Oh my wow. Um, so my, <laughs> it sounds terrible, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, my exposure to black culture only really started after high school. Really, we were able to to hang out with those people because obviously at school you you hang out with your friends who are right. Afrikaans who are white people. You don't really get to go out of that zone so most africans are like white i'm just I'm, so at, at this point a lot of people think that but colored people i think make up the biggest yeah, percentage of african speaking people in south africa mm. but then it is yeah it's probably like let's say three million colored people and about two and a half three million white people but a, a big part of the country can speak Afrikaans as well you know so yeah uh, Colored is, is a derogatory. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? I see you guys looking at all the way to me. I forgot about this. I was trying to hold my capote. No, no, no. no. He's kidding. He's an actual. I know Tyler went through this as well. We were calling colored. We have kidding, colored kidding. people in, yeah, in South yeah. Africa yeah, 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 and it doesn't refer cool. to a mix of people. Right, right. It's it, it's a um, 
what would you call it? It's uh, it like a white parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Form a colored yeah, 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 yeah. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 crazy how different cultures are, and, yeah. and and especially when, as an American, you don't kind of see that. Yeah. I mean, we I see different cultures among the black community, but mostly black people kind of stick together. Mm -hmm. um, there's not that much separation. Yeah, and you know, growing up in our high school, we had form cliques as well, but it's mostly just black, Hispanic, white, Asian, yeah. Yeah. and just basically the color of the your racial skin. balance. The racial balance. And then as you grow older, you find out like we're all mostly all the same. Yeah, we have all the same yeah, needs yeah. and wants. We're all just struggling to stay alive. Yeah. Correct, <laughs> especially these yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's crazy. I mean, so let's let's fast forward to. Your first audition for Blood and Water. What was that for? Well, I, I did you want to tackle a little bit about your career before Blood and Water? Did you guys book anything else? Because after the soap opera, you went straight to Blood and Water. But what about you? Oh no! So okay. did, did, there were about four years in between those. So oh, okay. Okay. I went. I went on to. I did a few films. Mm -hmm. um, then I started working um, behind the scenes. I, I worked on a travel show, so we traveled around the world where I was doing camera work and directing. Wow. Um, then started the company and the acting sort of dried up. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. I started realizing it's a bit difficult in South Africa to, yeah, <laughs> to yeah, do yeah, this full, yeah. full time. And then, yeah, and then Blood and Water came along. Yeah, so I, I had four roles before I could book uh, Blood and Water. Mm -hmm. All those were obviously like years apart. Right. But yeah, so four, four shows. I've been on four shows. One was a web series. Not okay. really big, but you know, it's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, up until... And how was that navigating those four shows? So did you have an agent? How was the same system in South Africa? Yeah, it's, just, it's the same system. So I had an agent. Actually, for my first job, a friend referred me. He mm -hmm. gave me like the script and then I went there and I booked that. That's crazy. And now the agent wanted to be like, oh, okay. So you book something, let's sign you. Mm. They oh, didn't you make want money? Yeah, before yeah. they don't want to do yeah, it. Yeah. They don't want to sign me initially. Right. But then after that, from, from that point, I, I had an agent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's the same process as you know they they get the castings, they send it out to you to whoever's on their books. Mm -hmm. You book the job, get a bit of or give them a bit of commission, and and right. that's it. But we don't we don't really have managers yeah, that yeah. side. Really? Yeah. yeah if I say really, like we don't we don't yeah, have like managers. Our agents can negotiate negotiate like, contracts. Yeah. contracts and yeah. all that. Same here. I mean, with agents and managers, they both do the kind of the same thing. Managers more incorporated in your life. So it's like, oh, we need to get a PR and mm. cultivate your image so, a lot yeah, more. They're basically the network and building the bridge and the gap between where you want to go for longevity of your career. Yeah. So they're the road mapper, you know, mm -hmm. essentially. And agents pretty much just like harness opportunities for you. Uh, okay. So... Um, First, I can be your manager if you guys want. Right, to. <laughs> and we need to build a management firm out there. Oh, let's, yeah. I mean, we might as well. Go ahead <laughs> We're and do it. We'll okay. talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's clear it up. But all right, so now the audition process for Blood and Water. Uh, how was that for each of you guys? Because both of you guys had different experiences. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who? So, <laughs> what, what year is this? Like, what are we talking about? Five years ago? 2019. 19? Wow. Yeah, okay, yeah that's 2019. Too. I was actually going through a very, very rough patch at mm -hmm. that time. Like, I had no money, no work, right. nothing. And I actually want to tell you guys a story. Like, yeah. Yes. So, I was, I was auditioning for this one show that was upcoming, right? Mm -hmm. um, I go there, I audition, I get a callback, right? Mm. Did, uh, go for the callback again get another callback i had about four callbacks of going there and they keep saying you're killing it you're good for the role you know we're gonna book you and now they're pairing us at the last two callbacks they were pairing us with other actors that are doing well right. they want to see the chemistry and all that i'm thinking i'm gonna book this i <laughs> need it you know i really i like i'm i'm down and out yeah, yeah, yeah so i needed that and then i remember the last callback was on a friday no thursday Mm -hmm. And then the next Friday, a friend of mine who had gone home as well because of the same reasons, the rough patch, yeah. it's, it's just dry. He had to eventually move home. He gives me a call like, hey, dude, uh, I got this audition. It's for this role, for this show. I'm like, bro, that's the same thing I've been auditioning for. And I've been going to callbacks. Are you sure it's the it's same thing? It's like, yeah, yeah, definitely. They call me out here. Um, I need a place to crash. Can I crash by you? Mm. That's a, a good test of character, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? Come through, my brother. You know, let's see what right. we can do. And then he eventually came through, had to help him out, show him what I did, show show him what they liked and all of that. 
And then the Saturday, he goes for the audition, right? Remember, I've been going for the past like two weeks. Wow. Callbacks, auditioning, callbacks, all that. So the Saturday, he auditions. And then he comes back in my crib. Cool. On Sunday, he gets a call. You got the role. Wow. You got the role and you're starting to shoot tomorrow. Wow. On Monday. He doesn't have a place to stay anywhere. So, oh, man. Uh, you know, the weekend eventually became like a month of him staying with me. Yeah. And remember, I'm seeing my friend going for what I needed. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, it's not it's not a jealousy thing. It was just like, man, this could have been me. And yeah. I really needed it as well. Right. Right. Started shooting. Cool. And then... I think a week later, I get the audition for Blood and Water. Wow. Right? I go, I audition, go for the callback as well. Then I book the role. Mm-hmm. And then I feel like, you know, if it wasn't for me just helping my friend out, yeah, uh, yeah. I probably wouldn't have booked, you know, Blood mm-hmm. and Water. I would have. I Is he like still it, working on that show? No, it got canned. Wow. God can. It was, it was a terrible show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Maybe don't say it. Maybe don't say it. We say his name right here. It's in the show notes. See you in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it didn't it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. They only had like one season and it got canned. And wow. you know, I got blood and water sure. and here we are. Wow. Now what's that process? First audition of Blood and Water? What did you go for a self tape or you went in for it? No, no, no. We went to the room. The room casting possibly. room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you say you only went through it one process. Did you go to callback or director sessions or screen testing? So it's the first audition. Okay. And then I think I got two callbacks. No, one. One, one callback. And then we don't really do screen do you, tests. Who do you guys thing? read with when you're going into the rooms? Are you reading with a reader or the casting director? Or Just the reader, director? yeah. Usually the casting director is the reader as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, sometimes they have an assistant yeah. who reads. And, the same thing. Like yeah. That. Not, yeah. Well, sometimes we have a production assistant that's actually worked with them. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So call back. And then from there, I think about a couple of days later, I get the call that, hey. What's up? You What's booked up? it, yeah. You, you got the role. You Netflix, know? baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was it immediate Netflix or was it like a local show? No, it was. It's the f- second African original. Second original? African original. Yeah. Wow. So Netflix was, show. We yeah. knew that it's a Netflix show. Wow. Know? So that, that was around the first time Netflix came to South Africa. Yeah. So that was crazy to us, you know. Yeah, that's huge. And the, now with your neco- contract negotiations, they already slated you some episodes. So like, hey, you had an eight episode a season or what oh, was that? Your deal. What was your first deal structure like? So they, mm-hmm. they tell you the amount of calls you're going to get. And th- this is what they're going to pay for the calls. You yeah. Know? So, so we don't work per how, episode. Yeah. Uh, it's per day. Per day that you work. Really? Yeah. 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 How, who's Sucks. negotiating your yeah. contract? That's the, that's the standard in South yeah. Africa. Yeah. It's it's the amount of calls. Do you, you guys have. have a union? We do, but it's 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 kind of still like underground. They um, yeah, it's trying to. They try to to you know fight some battles, but the industry is so small that side, right. right? That they are overwhelmingly underfunded. Uh-huh. You know, there's only so much they can do, and. A lot of the things they're trying to push for as well, because the industry is so small, like it would almost implode if some mm. of the some of the regulations were to be put in place. Right. So we're in a catch twenty two of like, do, do we want to work yeah. and do some of it, and maybe the conditions aren't always that great, or are we not going to do anything mm-hmm. because yeah. we don't have regulations in have place? Yeah. Mm. So oh, no, uh, your your particular mm-hmm. perspective on you auditioning for Blood and Water. So kind of the same thing as like I, I was going through a, a bit of a bad spot before the auditions as well. Because like I said, I, I had to decide, is it going to be the business now or am I going to still try this acting And you're thing? also coming from a production side, I understand yeah, as well. Yeah. So you're kind of already familiar with the landscape. Yeah. But so with Blood and Water specifically, I got a call from a guy who I'd worked with two years before. Um, he was an art director on a little short TV film we did. Mm-hmm. And he phones me up. He's like, hey, what's up? I'm working on this new show. I'm sitting with the director. Um, they're still looking for someone for a character. Did you audition for the show? I'm like, no, I have no idea what that is. I've never heard of it before. He's like, okay, no, cool. I'll, I'll speak to her and see if we can get you an audition. So the next day, my agent phones me. They're like, listen, we got a call for this thing called Blood and Water. I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. I don't know what it is. It's another audition, you know? Right, Who right, cares? Well, you care, but you, <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, used to the process. You're right? throwing up numbers at this point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so in my in my um, Gmail, I typed in Blood and Water to find the email. I got an email from like two months back saying Blood and Water Castings, which my agent sent me. And... 
I'd completely forgotten about it, but I went into the email and I saw they sent the auditions out to all their actors, but I was not on the list. Wow. Mm. And I remember or I saw that I, I replied to it like, hey, my name's not on the list. Is this meant for me? Mm. And they just replied, no, sorry, it was a mistake. Wow. And so <laughs> now fast forward, I've got an audition the next day for the show and I rock up at the audition and it's only two scenes. And I go in, I do them, and the casting director's like, okay, cool. So scene three, I'm not, uh, sorry, what do you, what, what? What? scene three, I only, I only got two. Yeah. She's like, no, we sh- you should have gotten three. I'm like, no, I've only got the two. And she says, oh, that's a shame because that's the best scene. In, the, oh, <laughs> in wow. that moment, I'm like, okay, give me five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me five minutes. Grab the scene, go out, and I see there's another guy who's about to go into the room as well. So now I'm like, I don't want him to go in because we were just creating magic inside. Yeah. Right? I need to keep this flow. So while he's still filling in his form, I'm scanning the pages. And luckily, because of the soap I did, mm-hmm. I was used to like memorizing lines quickly. Mm-hmm. Before he could step in, I ran back in. I'm like, cool, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. Camera's rolling. Let's go. And I nailed the take. I didn't fluff once I got wow. through it. Um, now, are you auditioning with the paper in your hand or are you just like... No, off, no, no. Totally I, just, I just threw it out. Yeah. yeah. We never... Like, you're actually not allowed to have the papers in your hand oh, while really? auditioning. Damn. That's yeah, like, yeah. You guys do that? Hell yeah. 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 I mean, you know, me? we it know. depends. It depends on how fast do we get the audition sides. Yeah. So if we're going into the room, of course, we're going to feel comfortable. And this is your security blanket, right? Just in case, you know, you might need to pick up a line or two. But... As professionals, we sometimes we're totally off book. Yeah, uh, I mean, majority of all actors are off book. Mm. Um, it's it they depend- said on, they said on top of the audition site, you're not authorized to remember the lines. You're like you don't have to memorize so lines, but with, majority of actors remember. With our new lines. regulations, our union SAG after they put uh, stipulations on how actors to prepare for an audition tape because you're supposed to be getting paid for every time you go and do an audition because yeah. it's considered a work. Mm. Right. So they now put a certain type of limitations on like, you know, you don't remember your lines. You have more four than pages, 72, four pages only, you know, uh, 72 hours of turning your self tape. So it just, you know, it just kind of so, mm. makes it easier for But that. do they follow those regulations? No. <laughs> um, July is our hard mandate, meaning like we have to abide by these regulations or the casting director might or the production company might get a fine or something like that. Oh, mm. Sure. Okay. No, we fun. we That's, need to be. Yeah, we yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, we got <laughs> <Every> it cushy. <laughs> we got it easy over here. That mm. sounds fun. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, to to wrap it up. So, did the um, final scene went great. Um, felt good about it. Got back into my calm. Like maybe this is maybe I should still do acting. Maybe mm. I enjoy that. So you was, you was like throwing acting out the window at this point. It was kind of just I had to. I had to decide what am I going to do for the rest Mm. of my life because even though I'd done quite a bit of work up until that point, I was presenting shows as well and stuff. Like I mentioned, the the industry in South Africa is small, Mm -hmm. which means financially as well, it's small. small, And like I got to a point where I realized, man, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this for another 45 years of like you're actually doing well, like you're successful, but financially you're still struggling. Right. And it's a hassle to keep like paying your bills every month. Um, and the reality is you're not going to be in every show. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and if you're not on the show, you're not making money. That's why soapies are so massive in South Africa because it's a consistent Consistful. salary. Yeah. 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 Um, so I was at that point of like, cool, you're like 23 now, 24, like. Yeah, your feet wet. Yeah. Yeah, it's time. Yeah. It's time to to figure out your life, yeah. and two days later, got the call. Okay, cool. You booked it. Wow. We start shooting in like I think it was like two weeks time that I had to be in Cape Town. So I only joined the casting process right at the end. Like they'd already finalized most of the cast, really? and then I got part of the conversation. So, um, so lucky, lucky, yeah. Season one. I guess, so you're kind of like already full steam ahead by the time he joins in mm. into the process. What does season one look like? First day on set, you're getting to know your castmates. You're mm. getting building up that <laughs> chemistry. You're yeah. seeing all the pretty ladies. You yeah. know, you kind of like, all right, I got I to gotta make sure I bring in my A game. Or are you so relaxed? You're like, okay, let me not just step on anybody's toes and not be very too big. So I, I, I don't remember the first day on set. I just remember the first day when we started reading the script. 
Mm. Right. So we don't we don't when when you audition in South Africa, you don't get the whole script and read it and then decide that. Uh, you, know, you just get, you know, the size and the yeah, and then mm-hmm. you perform and then you know you get it. But yeah, the the first day when we read the script, I was like, okay, this is this is really professional. It was my first time being in a setting where we're reading the script. Yeah, the whole the cast. Oh, it was a table yeah. read. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So that for me was exciting. Felt a bit professional. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, now we really we're in the this. big leagues now. Yeah, yeah. Were you nervous? <laughs> yeah, I was. I was a bit nervous, but excited for the most part. Right. Mm. Yeah. And as far as like the chemistry with the other actors, how well, how long did it take for you guys to click? You guys to warm up to each other. I think we we it just naturally happened, man. Mm-hmm. From yeah, that immediately. Day. Yeah, yeah. We, him and I clicked from 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 the know, airport. Yeah, yeah, we met at the airport. What we yeah. were we were sitting on the flight next to each other the whole way through, not realizing we're going to the same yeah. spot. Really, I was kind of irritated with him <laughs> because I saw this guy walking on the plane. And he's like got his headphones cool. on and he's trying to be cool and he sits, <laughs> he sits next to me and he's spreading. You know, he's spreading on the plane. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, Come on, man, move right. a bit. You know, yeah. and he's taking up the armrest as well. So the whole the whole flight, I'm like. I'm going to fight this guy when we get <laughs> off this plane. And just as we land, I hear him talking on the phone and I heard the word Netflix. And as he puts the phone down, I'm like, are you, are we, are we going for the same thing? Blood and water. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, cool, man. What's <laughs> up? Let's go. And yeah, yeah and immediately we, just... we became friends from there. So when they, did they give you guys a rel- relocation fee or anything like that? For housing. housing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we okay. were put up in a hotel, per diems, all of that sorted. Um, yeah. Three so, months, three months in Cape Town. Three oh, months in Cape Town. Yes. You finished your first season. What was the response right after season one? Mm-hmm. And what and did it did it feel like okay this is it I made it did you get a, a whole flood of IG followers are you on the yeah. news every when, single day when it aired or when it yeah. aired yeah. when it aired yeah. yeah it was it was exciting man I was like what I I kept checking my phone and the numbers is just yeah like, Instagram just, just flying yeah, I remember just, we like. I would phone you like every day a couple of times, like, I'm getting messages from Brazil, man. <laughs> <laughs> sending me Portuguese, yeah, yeah and whatever. Yeah, like, was, oh, another thousand followers. Like, it was, it was, it was mad. And then following the show, like in different countries in the top 10 as well. I right. Went top number one in like all these countries we'd never imagine our show mm. would show mm-hmm. or would be um, available. Mm-hmm. And it just kept on climbing and climbing. And yeah. there was a feeling of like, Okay, this, this is, is so much bigger yeah. than we expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah. so much it bigger really than was, we actually. thought it would be. Now, Arno, were you married there in that time? Was or I married? No, yeah. no, no. I met my wife a couple of years later. Well, no, not a couple of years later. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? What? Let, me just, let, me just, let me just think about this quickly. Uh, <laughs> when, when, did, when did the show come out? I had three girlfriends. Uh, 20, 20, 20. Okay, no. I had met my wife by that point. We were we were dating. We oh, were yeah, dating okay. at that point. Yeah, oh, right. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Got a bit fuzzy. Right, I baby. love you. I love you. Sorry. Uh, no, we'd, we'd met by that point. But <laughs> no. by, when we were shooting the show, we hadn't met yet. It felt like I was single. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, about to get into trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cut did, that. Did piece. your relationship status change? Did it feel like you had a lot more access to being on a Netflix show? Do you like feel like... With people in general. General, not just, just women, women, yeah. but but people in general. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'd say. So you was, was out there spending money. <laughs> <laughs> you was out there willing and dealing. I was, I was trying not to, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it, it kind of does give you access to like a lot of the things that you know you'd love doing and all right. that stuff. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yeah. Did, were, did your relationship change with people saying like people will start looking at you different with friends and family? And just your among your peers? I I found just a lot of people thought we were much bigger than yeah. what yeah. we were. Mm-hmm. And that we were getting paid. Oh yeah, for like, sure. Like, it's always like, like that. way more than yeah, what yeah. we people would constantly ask me, like, oh, where's the Porsche? Yeah, you know, yeah, where's, yeah. The, where's the Ferrari? I'm like, no, nah, man, mm-hmm. it's still on order, you know, yeah, they've got yeah, a back yeah, order yeah, and yeah. the <laughs> the ship went Season down, six. we're still waiting for it. Yeah. <laughs> still on the container. <laughs> and your your friends want you to pay for drinks now. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. hey, man, we shot the show like a year ago. Yeah. Just yeah, just like, hold on a bit. The yeah. perception of fame and it comes with money all the time yeah yeah yeah, yeah that was tough it's, it's just unfortunate yeah, mm-hmm. when it comes to that i think the good thing though is every time i went for auditions after the show came out 
there was a whole different yeah vibe yeah mm. for sure like i remember going to one audition uh, one to one casting and there's like 10 guys in the line and they open up the door and the casting director comes out and she's like you know writing stuff and she looks up and says, i don't know oh come through come yeah. through yeah. Like, yeah. okay why why because I'd been there a year before yeah. and like they didn't even want me to audition for this yeah. because I, you know, I was a nobody. Do you let that get to your head? Do you feel like, oh, I'm the, the man psyche? No, it. I actually mm-hmm. felt so bad because I know these guys standing outside and mm-hmm. all of a sudden I'm just walking past and I'm going to audition. And when I got into the room, they're like, listen, so um, we actually want to give you the job. Are you the available? Offer. Wow. And I'm like thinking, no, but all these guys are standing outside. I haven't even auditioned yet. Like there's talented guys outside. You can't do it like this. But at the same time, you're like, I also need this job. I need this money. So, so people's perception in a professional setting changed as well. There Mm -hmm. was like a thing of, Oh, okay. You, you're on Netflix now, you blood and water now, which is also a double edged sword because the producers you'd worked with before also had this idea of like, Oh, so you big time now, right. you know, you, you big money you're now. You're marketable, right. you yeah, can sell, yeah. you're a product now. Well, you mentioned it in a positive way. I mean, like, kind of negative oh, as in, like, okay. oh, we can't work with you anymore. Yeah. You're mm-hmm. overexposed now or yeah. you, you know, you overprice now, whatever it may be. Mm. Um, so, so it kind of, um, it made it difficult to now navigate this world where you are, where you've been trying to get to this point and now right. you're here. It's like okay, but I can't really go back now. Now yeah. it needs to keep on building. It needs to mm. needs to keep on growing. So what do you now. do personally to ground yourself? Well, what about your? Tea? I want to explain. Like, what about your story about the dynamic for relationship and people? How that changed for you? Yeah, I mean, it changed in the same way. Like mm-hmm. you know, constantly being observed, you mm. know, and sometimes oh, you yeah. just you just want to go somewhere and chill out and right. just observe people right. and that, and not have them observe you yeah. the whole time yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. so yeah it, it, it changed my life a bit in that sense people staring at us like where do i know this guy yeah, from? Yeah, yeah. everybody oh, think they oh, know you him yeah, yeah some will obviously make it you know <laughs> noticeable that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and then you it's, start worrying about what you're like, wearing yeah, you and how you're walking self-conscious but mm-hmm. I've, I've learned to you know be comfortable with it and sort of like embrace it you know right. what do you what do you do to ground yourself with that um, attention, then you sort of um, you know I feel like um, with me, I always want more, and I value growth a lot. So mm-hmm. I understand that hey, I'm not I'm not I'm realistic about where I am, mm-hmm. and a bit delusional about where I want to go. So right. because I haven't gotten to to the point where I want to go, I sort of like really like humble myself a bit. Right, and be like right. okay, this there's still a long way to go. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's that's what I have in my mind the whole time when it comes to like grounding myself. Mm-hmm. You know. And what is your guys' vision for your next steps to see where you guys want to go? So this is obviously part of it, you know, coming mm-hmm. to coming to America, seeing what's happening in this side, how it works. I think mm-hmm. it's really important just to find out how does the industry actually operate? What's the differences toward, um, you know, um, compared to what we have we have in South Africa? Right. Um, I think we, we've both found that because our South African industry is quite small, you, you're quite limited to where for you sure. can go and what you can do. For sure. Um, but that, also that's a lot of opportunity for you to kind of, Grow bring a lot faster. Grow a lot faster and bring new opportunity to South Africa. I guess, I guess yeah. Um, and and I remember when I started out, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be the change. You know, I'm yeah, going to yeah, be the change. Yeah, yeah. But you also get to a point where you realize, you know, my strengths lie in other places. I'm mm-hmm. not necessarily the guy who's going to push the industry forward. Right. Because there's so many people doing it who have been doing it for years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've worked. You know, we've got extremely talented people that side, people who do amazing work. Um, and I mean, the show is coming out as a testament to that. And I know I'm not, I'm not going to be able to produce a better show than that. Right. Um, you can, and you will. <laughs> maybe in time, maybe in time. Um, but purely from an acting standpoint, mm-hmm. um, we just don't get enough work that side that challenges you as an actor. Um, you know, when it, let's say we've got three big shows being produced every year. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got three opportunities to, to work. To work. So if you don't book one of those three, you're not, Your you're not doing shot. anything. Yeah. Mm. And maybe you book one of those, but it's exactly the same character as what you did on the previous show. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 
So so it's good now where we are, people know us, but you kind of get typecasted into the, that same role again. Would you guys ever consider moving to L.A.? or? Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So this is like the test. We're considering it test. right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. While we're sitting here, it's like, yeah, this yeah, feels just comfortable. Like, man, I don't want to leave here. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to leave. You know, ideally, you know, in an in an ideal world, we'd love to, you know, move here and, right. mm. and be by coastal. Like it, at least, it's be by coastal at least. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, that's what we want right now, and focusing on that, but. You know, it's kind of like if you're not earning in dollars, it's a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's quite oh, difficult. For sure. LA is expensive. Yeah, Very it's expensive. It's one of the most expensive cities in the world. How do you guys world? do it? Are you? I think, see, the thing is for us, we started as actors as well. And then we learned really quickly, if you don't make enough money to survive, you would die. Here. Yeah. And you would end up on the street as a homeless person. Yeah. That's so, why I always like to tell actors, always have a business. Like yeah. you started a production company. Us is just for survivability, uh, having a business and also pursuing doing our dreams at yeah. the same time. So yeah, we then, started in commercial. Give you a little backstory. We started in commercials, and me and my brother, we booked campaigns just similar to yourself, where we like had like this tag campaign, this campaign, mm-hmm. and we were like, you know what? We're gonna take this money and we're gonna invest it. And we started mm-hmm. our production company where we do like curate spaces for actors and self tapes, mm-hmm. and we like shoot web series and videos and micro media content, influencer content. And we're like, okay, this is going to be the brink of something mm. that we can e- either expand and grow and help other creators. Well, it took us a long journey to move forward yeah, yeah, to even get to this yeah. point. Yeah. I mean, we've been in L.A. for about 10 years now. Yeah. But just learning that you having parallel movement is so crucial to pursue an art form. Mm. I mean, just pursuing art in general, you've got to have some type of business mechanism behind you to financially support your art. And yeah. anything that we do as an artist, you got to have a business mindset. Yeah, yeah. Like, you got to say... You are a business. You, you are a business. Yeah. So how do you then maneuver the, the dynamic, that whole dynamic of like, okay, I need money to start a business, but yeah. am I booking something? Shit. I mean, well, using see, what the thing is, what I tell people is you have to go and invest in your learning. We leverage capital, meaning okay. like say if you get your Netflix show season four, they offer you $60,000. You take that $60,000, you put it into a bank and then you go to the bank and say, hey, I got $60,000. I want $60,000 in, in uh, credit, a line of credit or in a loan. Mm. You, then they get now you have one hundred and twenty thousand mm. dollars. You take that sixty and you go invest into whatever business that you want to start it. If it's a production company, acting school, whatever it is, something that you only can provide because you're so knowledgeable at it. Mm. And then you just turn that into something that you can do. That, and especially these today and today's time, you can make money doing anything. Yeah, we yeah. like you. I literally sit here. You can make money from all over the world. Yeah. Like we have people that audition with us in London, Paris. So, uh, uh, South America, like mm. just people just really wanted to connect because they want to be a part of the community here. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're like, dude, that's crazy because the internet is so vast and it gives you opportunity to yeah. make money. That's why I always call parallel movement, finding something that you're really good at and you're passionate about and you make money from it. Mm-hmm. So you guys are passionate about acting, but you make money from from a production company or coaching or whatever. It's mm-hmm. parallel movement. You not only have your business, but you're also pursuing your dreams at the same time. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, you just yeah, so I say surround yourself with like-minded people. You know, you, it, it takes a village to kind of get you where you need to go. Yeah, especially, it, it, I got my brother. If I didn't have him, yeah. it'd be impossible for me to just do this by yeah. myself. For sure, because you need the right type of motivation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I could have done it by two myself. Is season three? You yeah. guys are in it. It's freaking gangbusters, and mm-hmm. it's looking really bright. How does it feel to get this far? And because most shows get canceled out of their first season. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I, yeah. I mean, freaking um, the biggest show on um, HBO. Netflix is Stranger Things. I think they only got what five, no, five yeah, seasons to five seasons. Five yeah. seasons. So y'all are close. Y'all mm-hmm. getting Stranger, <laughs> and they canceled Stranger Things. So <laughs> okay, but Stranger Things cost yeah. a lot more money. Today. <laughs> That's <laughs> Stranger <true>. Things. Yeah. <laughs> like, I understand that. So season two, season three. How does it feel to be you guys have made it this far and saying, all right, now I have my footing? Mm. Do you guys look for no new opportunities? Like, ah, do I want to continue with blood and water? I'm not gonna say you're not going to continue with blood and water. I'll <laughs> be another check, but do you say, okay, I look for other opportunity elsewhere, or do I want to expand and grow for like maybe a theatrical, a feature film, or produce my own content? Mm. What do you, you say? Should, should I go first? Yeah. 
Um, season two was that was an easy like sure, let's go, yeah, let's yeah go. Sure. because the show blew up so so big. Um, everyone was like super excited to get that going, um, and I think the the story was was still very fresh. I think for me, like f- from a bit later on, I started feeling like I'm. I think I'm getting too old for this because mm. when we started i <laughs> i turned i was 23 24 right? right and now we're getting to like season three and i'm like i'm pushing 27 you know yeah. and and now i'm i'm turning 29 this year um, yeah, you got time baby so <laughs> so it it kind of felt at a point like i'm not sure if i'm right for this anymore mm-hmm. and maybe they should should recast me in this thing which luckily they didn't they were like no it's <laughs> fine we'll you know we'll You're just shaved. we'll just put a lot of makeup on yeah. shave three times a day um what's good about the show though in and and i guess south africa is you know it's three months we shoot a season in three months right. um it's it's kind of a quick in and out i, I don't know how long a you know s- season Perry? will take yeah, yeah yeah tyler perry shoot a whole season in four seven days or seven days <laughs> something like that so that, the it, like, 21 you, episodes 21 that good or bad that's horrible <laughs> oh, but that, that's studio yeah, that's right bad. i mean that's <laughs> I <Whoa>. take it <laughs> it's as, it's not as fun I but that say. that's studio right that's studio yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> obviously blood and water is all location but um, you know, we shoot anywhere between like four to eight pages a day, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. where I think a lot of other productions will do like one, one and a half pages yeah, yeah, a yeah, day. Yeah. Most productions. So it's, cool. it's, it's, it's quite quick. So, I mean, you've got nine months open in the year mm. and now you've got a bit of a reputation and you've yeah, got yeah. some, you know, backing behind you. So naturally other projects just started opening up. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you could, you could still take them. Okay. I think that here and there, there were some problems with like, um, especially during COVID yeah, yeah. where they had to like move the seasons around and then stop again and start again. And then it became quite difficult of like, okay, well, I mean, we need to be in the show because we've already established the first season, but now other opportunities have come up as well. Um, but everything worked out in the end yeah. and for the better. And um, I think there's no way I wouldn't have gone on with the show because it it just kept on growing it just yeah. kept on getting bigger yeah. we thought like maybe season three is gonna be like oh, yeah. Yeah. maybe people are gonna be start getting tired yeah. and then it i think that was the first time it actually broke into the top 10 in america yeah where the previous that ones the didn't didn't break through so season three broke through this side and was like okay no let's continue and we'll yeah. do another seven seasons if we really need to you know yeah. what about you yeah it's, it's the same thing for me you know uh, as it kept growing Mm-hmm. I also grew like outside of that as well, you mm. know, seeing my life change in, in such amazing ways. Did so, you buy a house? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I, I would love for that. To be <laughs> you know, but Producers, we, get in there. we need a house. We get in there. Yeah, we get yeah, yeah. In there. Um, yes. You know, an apartment at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but yeah, we, we're getting there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what do you guys want to like say your aspirations outside of blood and water was it what will be your next goal to hit i think because you've like, done the you know it's it's it, it, you've done the television route yeah. and quote mm-hmm. unquote quote and speak was it i mean but you guys are just beginning in your career yeah, yeah, too yeah. so it's like i mean who who says you want to do you might want to continue more on tv mm-hmm. but what aspirations where you want to see yourself go into next i think so for me like we spoke earlier about what was the experience for tabang walking on set the first time for season one right Mm -hmm. for me that was seeing for the first time oh we've actually got budget to get nice houses like Mm. usually you'll get a mansion (laughs) and then it's 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 like a two-bedroom house with Mm. a pool you know and and that's the mansion this time it was like mansion you know these amazing houses and cars and you know the costumes and props and i i used to do a lot of films where like if there's a prop that needs to be smashed they've only got one reset you know (laughs) so you've only got one take this time no we've got like six resets don't worry about it wow so that was an amazing experience season one right and then you get used to it for Mm -hmm. every season and then i think now the ambition is just like sometimes we can't do action stunts 
any type of car chases, any mm-hmm. type of things that, in, you know, require fireworks yeah. or things being blown up. Action in general really is, right. is uh, for me, like I would love to do stuff like that, mm-hmm. um, but we don't have the budget that side. And that kind of feeds into the general answer of just like, just working on bigger stuff, you know, mm-hmm. bigger productions. I've never done studio work, like mm-hmm. proper studio work. And I'm not talking like, um, Avatar, like, th- like Tyler Perry. Yeah, 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 but like animation type stuff or, mm-hmm. or CGI type stuff. Mm-hmm. I know in America, like a lot of actors, they shed on that and, yeah. and people no, don't want to really, do it. Yeah. Not like not pure really. actors, like pure actors. You know, like the Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, oh, yeah, talking yeah, about Jake yeah, yeah. They don't yeah, like it. They don't like yeah. the Marvel. They don't yeah, like the, yeah. oh, well, he did, did Spider-Man. But they kind of shy away from yeah. it because. But I, I would just love to experience that. Mm-hmm. Because oh, for sure. we don't really have that in South Africa. So things that require World a lot building. more people, a lot more knowledge. Yeah. I think that's something like it's a, it's a part of acting that we have no clue about you know yeah, we, yeah. we don't know how it works um so it, it's all about expanding growing learning learning mm-hmm. more um you know we, we've done single cam stuff in south africa we kind of know the genre we know the medium um it's now about okay what what else is there yeah, what, what what else, else can there? you learn about yeah I, I feel the same way you know i'd, I'd love to be like in, in in the dope action movie yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, you know i've always been passionate about you know, those kind of shows and films where, like, there's gangsters and there's drugs and stuff like that, like, <laughs> power, snowfall. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I need to be on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Uh, The main reason for me is because I'm always costed as, like, you know, the rich Edgy. kid, yeah, pretty yeah. boy, whatnot, yeah. whatnot, the heartthrob. Uh-huh. I'm tired of that. I want like it's tough yeah. to be beautiful. You want to be angry. It's, it's yeah. difficult to be beautiful. Be beautiful. Yeah. Wanna, All I the wanna, girls want you. I don't want that yeah. no more. <laughs> I'm not saying it like that, but you know, it's he just, is. Yeah. That's what I've been. I'm not. <laughs> I want to switch it up. Yeah, I, wanna, I really want to switch it up, man, and and try and have something more challenging to yeah. see what I'm capable of. Yeah, you know, yeah, push I, your limits. I, I believe I am capable of that. We just haven't seen it yet. Mm-hmm. Right. So I want, I want a platform where I can showcase that as well. It's the know? material as well, right? Like the type of stories we we do in South Africa, the the material is kind of, you know, it gets, it gets limiting. You yeah. Know? yeah. yeah. Um, you want something that's really going to challenge you. That, that is it because of the culture there? Do you think is it hasn't reached? I think it's just the it, writers. I've said it so many times, and I feel bad about it. But but because the industry is so small, and like I mentioned, there's only so many shows they can make, right? Yes. So mm-hmm. it needs to have mass appeal. Yeah. Um, and it needs uh, be relatable. It be relatable. To, to who you're so selling it to? There's yeah. only so much you can do, right? You can't right. be experimental. You can't be trying funny stuff. Um, because let's say for Netflix, Netflix. Africa, right? And the yeah. shows they produce in South Africa. I'm not sure how many, but I think they do about f- between, let's say, four and six projects a year, that side, right? So all six of those projects need to hit. That means you can't be taking risks on, on, yeah, on experimental material, um, something that's a bit out there. So you, as an actor, it, it, it it's means you're going to be, you either going to be playing some kind of stereotype character. Mm-hmm. Or it's 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 not necessarily going to be something that's that's super challenging or, or that gives you growth as an actor. Okay. Yeah. I think from my perspective, I mm-hmm. think that comes into play is production companies not creating the opportunity for actors. Mm-hmm. Um, if there is a you know like a twenty four or a Bloom House somewhere out there that can say you know what I'm going to create it, forget the studios. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go create what, exactly what I want to create and then go find the financing for it mm-hmm. and then bring it to the community, see if it's well received, and then go sell it to someone else. There's so many other streaming platforms. Mm-hmm. We have Amazon, we mm-hmm. have Disney+, Plus, we have HBO, Showmax. So it's just about the right type of people leading the forefront, yeah. you know, and you, it's, it's but the hardest you. part you, but you and said it's it finding, finding capital for it. It's, yeah, I mean, to invest yes. if they're not making money in behind it. Essentially, that's what we do as filmmakers, right? We take those risks that we know that's not possible and we go and try to do them. I think studio systems are learning now. They're taking a lot of risks on Marvel movies and right. all these movies and they're not capitalizing off of it. So they have to make smaller films yeah. to, 
Right, and but we as, gang. you know, I'm going to say it again, like, as filmmakers, we got to take that challenge mm. and say, if they're not going to make the film that I want to mm. be in, I'm going to make the film for them. Mm. And then I'm going to show my audience that they want this. Mm. And then the audience is going to want that and they're going to have to bow down to the audience because that's who, they, that's who they're yeah. serving, right? They need them, yeah. They yeah. need that audience. And I think it just, you know, it pushes the community to create that content that they want to create. Yeah, with, you're starting to twist my arm here. Maybe I, I mean, should, it's uh, time. Yeah. I mean, it's time to start a production company for like, sure. Yeah. At least at least I tell all actors, learn how to write and learn how to storytell because not only you're pursuing storytelling and acting, but mm. writing and mm. penmanship is also crucial and important. And you? how do you guys approach a script? So when you go and perform, do you, you know, do character study? Do you do scene study or do you look at the overall um, plot mm. of your particular character? How, how do you map it out? Uh, so I I go through the process of creating a character bible, mm-hmm. you know, uh, listing out the, the 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 character's values, his needs, his wants, all of that stuff, and sort of like incorporate that with my own, and come up with like a, a, a sort of like a centralized character where it's, it's, it's a bit of tabang and a bit of you know the mm-hmm. character as well, you know, yeah. So that's what my bible covers. Mm. You know, and yeah, of course, reading what what you were given in the brief yeah, yeah, yeah. that counts a lot. Do you find uh, other films for inspiration? Do you like? I gotta go look yeah, at Will definitely. Smith. I am legend. A lot, <laughs> a lot. I, Who's I, your go to? Who's your go to in the repertoire? I love, I love dark characters, man. Mm-hmm. Like villains. I love villains. I want to play a villain at some point. But who's your favorite actor to kind of emulate? Not emulate. I mean, well, you just, our favorite character, yeah, I should say. Favorite character, mm-hmm. Thomas Shelby. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> on the list. Talk to. <laughs> uh, who else would I say? Uh, who's the Who's the villain in in in, in that show with Tom uh, Tom Tommy Shelby? Tom Hardy. Two. Yeah. yeah. Tom, Tom Hardy. Hardy. Who does oh, he Tom play Hardy. again? Gosh. Elfie. Yeah. Elfie yeah. Solomons. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Elfie. And then and then in season, I think it was season four. Yeah. It was played by Adrian Brody. Yeah. Luca, Luca Changreta. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Those are great Basically words. any character in Peaky Blinders. Yeah. Most oh, yeah. Of any them bad are, character. Yeah. For yeah. sure. I think they have some type of neurotic system about them. It's just like they're a little crazy. Mm. Yeah. But it's unhinged. Yeah. And you, it's really attractive. Mm. I think yeah. I, it's like the the anti hero. Mm-hmm. I like I like that because like with Peaky Blind, it's Tommy Shelby. He's an anti hero. You're not supposed to like this Correct. guy. He's just terrible. But mm-hmm. he's he's the anti hero Breaking Bad as well. Walter oh, White. Yeah. It's yeah. like you're not supposed yeah. to like this guy. He's messing Gustavo. up. But oh. but that as an actor, I think is 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 so fun because you're playing a horrible character, but you still need to. You, you need to find him, um, find something that makes him relatable. You, mm-hmm. you the need Dark to make Knight's sure. My favorite movie of all time, jo- with Joker Dark as well. Yeah. Like yeah. it's a horrible, ca- but you love what he did there. The like, performance, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that stuff intrigues me. I'd yeah. I'd love to so do that. So, what is as you well. guys' ultimate goal in pursuing this entertainment industry? Hold on, before we get there, now, I wanna, it's not even the last question. I, I, I want to hear your. Your breakdown of how do you approach? How do I approach? Yeah, it? I approach so it, it it differs from from project to project. Um, you You're know, coming from soap, so you have some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're used to seeing the lines and just immediately getting it, mm-hmm. which uh, which I guess is good if you have maybe had a rough night and you've got an <laughs> early call time. <laughs> no, so it, it really differs from 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 project. Like with Blood and Water, for instance, the first season I took a lot of time to actually find out. Okay, what what is this character? Really Really about um, what is the backstory? By that point, that didn't really say a lot about his parents and his family and growing up and all that. Um, so I had to go create that. And um, I I worked with a director years back where he he told us, okay, I'm giving you this notebook. You need to fill it. Mm. I want you to like create every day. You need to do a diary entry, but in the style of the character. And I mean, like handwriting, the way he would talk. The character I was playing there was was like a bit of a dumb guy, and mm-hmm. um, 
he was in a foster home and whatever. So the handwriting was horrible and his spelling was horrible. But And I thought, this, this is kind of stupid. I don't know about it. But five days in, I was like, okay, I'm starting to find the character now. Mm-hmm. Now I understand, actually. Creating um, a journal of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind that's of been my approach is to, is to spend time on that. Um, but with season two, three, like it's already been established. And now it's just looking at the script and, and figuring out all the arcs, you know. Okay, so right. this is where we start episode one. This is what we walk working towards and then breaking that down scene for scene of like, yeah. okay, it's cool. So we need to we need to build some momentum here, bring it down a bit here, yeah. find out, okay, but if this scene is happening, remember that triggers his past traumas. So, yeah. you know, try and bring that in. And there's a lot of stuff I... I sometimes I feel like you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be like, oh, you know, I'm going to throw everybody off. In a yeah, place. sometimes just you'll just do something completely different. But mm. but I've also found, like, you, you sometimes do so much work and you try and bring nuance and then you check the final edit. And no, <laughs> they they're them. not using any of it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. This director I worked with who gave me the note of the, the diary, the journal, he would do this thing of, like, we'll do the first take the way you, all the actors have interpreted themselves. And then he'd go to like each individual actor and say, okay, I want you to do it this way. Mm -hmm. But he wouldn't tell anyone else. And then he'd go to the other actors and tell them, okay, I want you to play this mad. I want you. So we'd start shooting and then all of a sudden everyone's like bringing a completely different energy to it. And sometimes in a scene, yeah, I, I try and incorporate that as well where we do it the first time the way the director wants right. it and the way everyone's rehearsed it and then you just bring something completely different and see what happens most of the time it doesn't work oh, <laughs> most okay. of the time it, it's yeah. weird but at least you're giving some options but yeah like and it also challenges your brain your thought process like i'm having fun i'm not yeah, just, just yeah, playing yeah. one type yeah. of way i think especially with like when you do four seasons of a show you get to a point where like, okay, I know I know this character yeah. and now it mm-hmm. becomes second nature. You need to force yourself to bring something yeah. new. Otherwise, it's just the same thing over and over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, like, who's the most unprepared on set? Like, when y'all get there, you're like, oh, <laughs> damn, I'm working with him again. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not like that, not like that. But, <laughs> or challenging. Uh, like, not unprepared challenging. in what way? Like, <laughs> like you just you say, know you know, lines or not like, yeah, not knowing lines or not pushing you. Okay. You're not throwing okay, nobody you're under the bus. No, we're definitely the throwing someone right. under the bus if we answer this. <laughs> No, I don't. Personally, I don't think we we kind of like had that. I must. Know? Say, no one on the set was ever like unprepared. Mm. Right. Like everyone was always on their game, mm. or at least if they weren't, they'd quickly, you know, go around the corner and make sure they were yeah. worth it. Um, that that was one of the easiest jobs because of everyone just you know bringing their game. Um, Even pre- better question: Who yeah. has the most fun on set? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's always having a good time? Yeah. Somebody like, oh, I'm yeah. not feeling it today. But they're like, hey, let's He's go. The clown of the city. <laughs> yeah. Making everyone's everyone everyone's, laugh, everyone's always jokes so uptight. And everyone's very serious, serious or just yeah. reserved. Yeah. Yeah. And that can become so, uh, like, <laughs> become boring but yeah. also like we need chemistry yeah. when we because it's always group scenes like you very seldom have just a one-on-one scene it's always at least three or five characters in a scene so right. um i think coming from soap you became so comfortable that you can just have fun with yeah it, no yeah where you yeah, go. yeah again season one completely different thing yeah. super focused trying to actually just figure out the character and the job Season three is like, okay, cool. I I understand. I get it. We've worked with the directors, so we understand each other as well. It becomes easier. It doesn't mean I become complacent, right. but it's easier to tap into it then. I think because of the soaps as well, you learn to create an emotion or create a scene within, you know, you never have rehearsal time. You just get to the floor and you create it. So it gives you that luxury of being able to have a bit more fun on set. Right, how are you on set? <laughs> uh... <laughs> A bit of fun and a bit of, you know, reserve. Reserve, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think he should describe me. He's, yeah, yeah, how is Tabang, Tabang is quite serious. Yeah, He's yeah. Uh, and, and a bit more reserved. I Everybody think, get out of his way when he walks on set. No, not at all. No, I'm not like that. you know, a over here. I still I still have a bit of fun as well. Yeah, yeah. You know. but you have to sometimes just drag it out of him. We, yeah, we yeah. tend to, like, hang around together on set most yeah, of the time and we, real time. yeah yeah and we always you know together in a trailer mm. um we'd never eat lunch separately or whatever um so i irritate him most of the time i think <laughs> but 
trying to drag him out also and, and, and try and have fun because it's tough, you know, when you're away from home for mm. three, four months, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we usually shoot in winter as well. Oh, wow. So it's a summer That's show us. in winter. The winter in Cape Town. Oh, it's man. cold, I mean, we it's don't, raining. We don't get snow like yeah, you guys, yeah. but shit. Yeah, it's, it's cold, cold, it's yeah. rainy. So you need to lift up the spirits as well because yeah. after like the first month, everyone starts to get tired yeah, and, yeah. And, um, and lots of night shoots. Oh, oh my like God. Lots of How big shoot. is the cast? This is about what? What is the leads like? like eight? I think 10, 15 or you guys? The right? leads, yeah, it's about eight or 10. Mm-hmm. Mainly, but yeah, the cost goes up to, I don't know, 150 yeah. or okay, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's big. Lots of people, yeah. How was the relationship with the director? Did you guys, was it, is it the same director from season one all the way to season three? No, we yeah, had, no. we Five, so season days. one, we had three different directors. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't switch every director every episode. Uh, we did, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, so one director would do episode like one and three, okay. another one two and four. Okay, that um, but then every season they they switch directors. Okay. They'd keep someone who was directing like the previous season, but mm. then try and bring in some new directors. Who well. shadows a little bit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was it was kind of a readjustment with every season of like, okay, yeah. so this is how guy. you working. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is how you doing it. Yeah. Um, and for them also coming into an established show with characters and actors who believe they've got ownership over yeah, their characters yeah, yeah. <laughs> who's the first one to push back <laughs> on the show to say uh, i think i know what i'm doing here thank you very much <laughs> That's you. <laughs> uh, that's not me. I'm thinking of someone else, but I don't want to like throw them. Oh no, no, yeah. you know. it's not a bad thing. This is like they know their stuff. <sighs> I think right. I think everyone had some had the a bit of yeah. <laughs> everyone had some growing pains here and there. Yeah, um, like oh man, but. They I don't like again just because of that the thing. ownership you think right. you you know you've got ownership and yeah, also and the story developed in such a way which you didn't necessarily expect was going to happen so mm-hmm. maybe it's not the same idea you had for the story going forward so then you know people get upset or they're not entirely happy but you you need to it's yeah. a team game you know you just need to slot in and do your thing um and I think, like, for the first week of shooting, generally, there was, like, a, it was a bit, okay, oh, yeah, what exactly yeah, is happening yeah. now? Yeah. And then by the second week, it's like, okay, cool, yeah, okay. same old, same old, let's yeah. just go, yeah. Do you guys ever pitch writers? Do no. you pitch, like, hey, look, for season three, I want a Lamborghini <laughs> in my eye. <laughs> and then I'm going to come back and kill So you guys somebody. don't talk to the writers. Is the writers on set? Uh, no. So the, the, most of the writers are actually the directors. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, the showrunner Nosipo. She's so she's head writer and and, and she's um, yeah she's been driving the story all the way through. Okay, and then they get the team writers as well. You, but you don't communicate up. with the showrunner like, hey, can you, can we talk about my it's character a little bit more? Not too, right? I, I think that. I mean, you 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 do and you can, but it doesn't necessarily mean translate into. Yeah, it's it's kind know? of. I think it's also it's kind of frowned upon. It's like you really? you, you expect it to. Yeah. You know, this is our vision, as in from the director showrunner's perspective, and you got to. You know, they Respect. created this, yeah, so yeah, yeah. you only you only you know playing a small part in this bigger vision. But you guys so. are bringing the characters to life, and then you're living yeah. with these characters three months to six months at the end. So you do have a responsibility as these characters. To say, hey, I, this is what I can showcase yeah. as this character to my personality, so you can mesh both worlds. Yeah, but they don't. They don't see that. Yeah, they, I'll, they, I'll talk to them. You yeah. get the game with their number. Please, you get you get free reign eventually yeah. to to play it the way you want to. Yeah, yeah. For like sure. you're not getting forced into. No, I want you to say it like this or right, that. Right. But uh, keeping in mind, like. That story has been developed for months yeah, before yeah, we for walk sure. onto set, 100%. and it's not just Years. it's not just yeah. them deciding. It's like the you know system. Netflix as well yeah, deciding yeah. this is the way we want to go. So I don't know. I feel it. It's better don't interfere. Like yeah. there's a million reasons why this was written the way it was. For sure, find a way that you can play it the best way you can. Don't mm-hmm. try and interfere and say no. I'm not doing this or this doesn't fit. You need as an actor, you need to find a way to make it work. Hundred percent, I agree. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to my other question, uh, question previously, what is the ultimate goal for uh, both of you guys about acting? Like where, where you guys see yourself? Where do you want to land? Not even land. But in in between Black Arnold Panther. Schwarzenegger and <laughs> Sylvester yeah. Stallone. Black Panther, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I, oh, that would be dope. Uh, you could be a dope killmonger too, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, That I'd anti-hero love, kind of thing you want to be. <laughs> I'd love to, to play Black Panther. I feel like... Mm-hmm. You know, most 
most actors would love uh, a good Marvel movie. Oh, for right? sure. Um, and yeah, to, uh, pretty much be the leading man, you know, the movie star type yeah. thing, you know. Right. And back to what you guys were saying, like Leonardo doesn't like, they stay away from that. I, I, I feel like it, 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 it all comes down to what you want for yourself. Do you yes. want to be the movie star or do you want to be like the method acting, mm -hmm. you know, lock yourself away in a hotel room for three months preparing for the character type of actor, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So I'd pretty much say uh, I want to be the movie star. Yeah, you know, yeah, I want to yeah. be like, you know, if we get Tabang on this movie, it's a, he's going to lead hit. the film. Yeah, he's going to be know? great. So that's, that's pretty much what I want for myself. I will dabble in, you know, playing other different characters in a different way as well. But ultimately, movie star. Yeah. Sure. Okay. How about yourself? Is that me? Is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, honestly, there's there's no there is no ultimate. There's no there's no final destination. The the biggest driving force for me always is just to you know to do good work. Um, at this point, I'm like, I would love to do series, a good series, and we've spoken like. Mm. Peaky Blinders, right, right, right. Breaking power. Bad, um, I'd Power. Love to be on Power. We can get you that, on Power. Yeah? We can get you on Power. Okay. All right. Jones, can't get, first of all, all, let me disclaim, he can't get nobody on nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we can, we can, we can, as background, I can do whatever. He's <laughs> 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 action. You got the right there, you see him? Blood and water, baby. <laughs> now, all the way from South Africa. <laughs> Artist. Highest <laughs> highest paid background artist in the world. Three hundred bucks a day, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. a hot dog for lunch. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, so a series something that that I think the biggest. Thing, I just want people to enjoy the work. Yeah, yeah just yeah, people sure. to be invested in it. And because I'm like invested in things like Peaky Blinders, Breaking Bad. Um, I what did I watch now the other day? doesn't matter it's mm -hmm. not relevant anymore but those shows stick with me right yeah. and it'll stick with me forever even like the office right mm -hmm. that used to be my favorite show in the world and i love comedy as well so mm -hmm. eventually i'd like to the british office or the more, american office uh american okay yeah okay. i watched the british one as well i fell in love with steve carell yeah, yeah. um brilliant he's, genius. he's one of my favorite actors ever time, so yeah. probably I'd, I'd like to go like down the route of steve carell right. do some comedy Come work some. um but now obviously his career has shifted to more more serious stuff the morning show as yeah. well yeah. things like that um i want to do work that stays with people yeah um because if i'm still watching the office 10 years later mm. i want people to want to watch my time. shows mm. 10 years later as well probably in a year i'm going to do a rerun of breaking bad mm -hmm. um you know it, it's it's to do work that means something that's impactful yeah yeah my brother's gonna ask the last question and he ooh, hold on one more question before mm -hmm. i ask the last question mm. You in a relationship? Yeah. How, what it being twenty something? I couldn't yeah. as an American. I'm like, I'm is that I'm, weird? That's tough. that's. Tough. I mean, not not weird because in, in in is Georgia, it LA, Florida, is it LA weird or is it? It's LA weird. Okay, you know, because yeah. twenty six, you married. I mean, twenty seven. <laughs> no, I'm I'm turning twenty nine. Twenty nine. Yeah, still, I'm thirty five. Huh? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he not even thirty five. He's thirty four. But it's also like more of a cultural thing. Correct. You know, where he comes from, there. Yeah. You know, you should, you're supposed culture. to be married by like 24. Yeah. So I, I pushed it. That's yeah. everybody too. And, and mo in most cases, they stick with their high school lovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. A thing like. Mm. So how, how did you know that this was the one that you were wanting to marry? So we. I, is she on the show? No, no, she's okay. not an actress. No, no, no. <laughs> she looks like she's the most beautiful woman in the world. You had to make up she what should, you said last time. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. Um, no, we. I saw her on Instagram like three or four years before I met her. Mm -hmm. And she was still in another relationship. And then like <laughs> eventually sniper. eventually, I, I checked her out again. I was like, I haven't seen a man on this page in a while, you know? Mm -hmm. And then eventually slid into the DMs and... Uh, and it's it started from there, but then we like on the first date we realized there were so many coincidences in us actually meeting each other, coming right. together. Turns out the day she broke up with her ex, I was on Instagram live singing a song, and that became like a breakup song wow. <laughs> and, wow. and stuff like that. Um, and I after our second date, I phoned my mom like, yeah, okay, cool. So this is happening. I'm gonna get married. Um, wow, you second, the second date. date, but only proposed like a year and a half, two years later. So, so yeah, man, 
It's uh, what is the married life like? It's beautiful, man. I love it. Um, we moved to Cape. So I used to live in Johannesburg before mm-hmm. we moved to Cape Town. Now, um, you know, started our lives that side. It's been quite an adjustment to be away from our families. Mm-hmm. Um, and also she used to live at home before. Mm-hmm. Um, so now trying to like figure out, okay, how do we live together? Because yeah, we didn't yeah, live yeah. together before we got married. Um, so yeah, I think the first three months were quite challenging on both of us, but we found the rhythm now. It's good. Um, she misses me a lot while I'm yeah, here yeah. and it's yeah. going to be horrible if I tell her I'm staying for another three months. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah. so hopefully that happens for me. Is she the, used to the entertainment business as far as like you going away from time? Yeah. Yeah, she's used to it now. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, obviously, everyone always asks like the kissing and the this and yeah, the that. Right, right. The first date, I told her like I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life. I'm gonna be an actor. Um, I am gonna kiss a lot of other people. I have kissed a lot of other people. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I'm probably gonna be naked here and there. I'm gonna do some funky stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to watch all of it. I know you support me, but you need to support me. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. if you're not gonna be able to do this, you need to tell me now. And she was like, yeah, cool, yeah, cool. <laughs> Obviously, the first time I told her, cool, so I'm, right. I've, I've got a sex scene in this film. Oh, it's wow. just like, mm-hmm. um, so about <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you sure you still want to do this acting stuff? Uh, no, but she's been good. She, she, she supports everything and she understands. She, and she knows me. She knows I'm professional. I'm not right. trying to, you know, yeah, right, right, get right, lucky on yeah, sets or right, whatever. Right, right, like, right. I'm just doing my job. Um, yeah. Your relationship yeah. status and like, how do you navigate relationships, especially in these times? I think we're so instant gratification as far as like, we just slight left and go to the next one, go to the next one. And mm. it's like a dating culture. How do you navigate? And so also I, because he's so pretty. Yeah, That's it's, awesome. it's, yeah. yeah. yeah the heart guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. heart proud, dude. <laughs> so I, I kind of like take my time with, with dating, especially right. after therapy, you know, mm-hmm. that really like changed my life and my, my, my dating. So I kind of take my time in, in vetting the woman and making sure that this is the right one. Because the last thing I want to do is get into that and then next thing it, it, it backfires and I have right. to start all over again. So I feel like right now I'm just taking my time with it. For sure. Um, you know, when I get the one, I'll know. You know, I kind of feel like I already know because there yeah. is someone, but you know... One Taking step your at time. a time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, I understand that. And I think also it's most important as a man, we also have to set boundaries and a foundation because mm-hmm. we're building a legacy and we're going to be the support system in this, like, whatever family situation that we get into. So we always have to set ourselves up for success. Yeah. And mentally, we're in the entertainment industry, so there's a lot of things that happen <laughs> yeah. at yeah. the same time. So we yeah. always have It's to difficult it. for a partner to deal with that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And because they go through the ups and downs with you all the yeah. way. Yeah. Right. Now, I mean, that's difficult now. If we actually decide to move this side or, or mm-hmm. do, you know, maybe spend six months here, six times, uh, six months mm-hmm. back in South Africa, that, you know, what's that going to mean? for my wife yeah. she needs to travel with me as well yeah, yeah. what she gonna do for work that type of stuff so yeah, right. that's um it definitely helps a lot to have a supportive partner and someone who gets it mm-hmm. so this is my very last question we kind of ask this to everybody i think in the grand scheme of life we go through a journey mm-hmm. and at the end of the journey we want to say i have done everything <laughs> that i have done and what god put in front of me mm. i ask this to you tabang have you found what you're looking for in life at this point of your time, uh, at this point of your journey? I don't think I'll ever find it. Mm. You know, I mm-hmm. feel like... And what is it that you're looking for? Can you say it? <sighs> you, can't, you can't put it in words, man. You can't, mm-hmm. it's, 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 you can't comprehend it, you know? For me, I have a mission and purpose, right? It's so big that I feel like I'm going to die pursuing it. You know, that's, that's the whole thing that keeps me alive. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to be like, you know, complacent and comfortable once I get all the things that I have, you you know, you can get goals which which are measurable and you can sort of like, you know, measure them in quantity and all that. But what happens when you get that goal, Mm -hmm. you you say, I want a million dollars. What happens after that? So that's why you should have a mission and a purpose that's, way more bigger than all of that because then you're going to die pursuing it. So mm-hmm. that's that's really my vision. You know, I want to die pursuing all of that stuff. I want to be in my deathbed saying, "Okay, look, you didn't you didn't 
you didn't, didn't squander quite get it. Mm. everything, but listen, you, you did. tried. You did your best, mm. and look, man, it's it's up there. You know, mm. let's 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 wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the plug. Yeah. <laughs> sure. What's it mean? Oh, okay. You should have given a longer answer, so I had more time <laughs> to think. Um, so when I when I started acting, right, I never thought I'd actually make it mm. or actually just get onto a TV show, right? Mm. And then that happened. And then you get onto the TV show and you're there for a bit and like, man, I want to do a movie. Mm. And then you're like, oh, I'm never going to get a movie, but you get a movie. And then you do that. And then you're there and like, okay, now I want to do like a big series. It keeps on yeah. going the whole time. And I I haven't found the question. Have, have you, you found, found what, what you're, you're, looking, for what you're looking for? I haven't found it. I've found things that I were looking for, mm -hmm. but every time it just elevates and elevates and elevates. And I think, yeah, that's the, that's the beauty of life is, and, and, and also the cost of ambition is like, It'll never, it'll never really be enough. Mm -hmm. Nothing will ever really be enough. I'm happy with myself. I'm super proud of what I've done in my life so far. And it's been great. And like, if I die tomorrow, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Because I tried. And I think it, it's kind of in the same line as what Sabang is saying. It's just knowing that you tried. You mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. tried. Mm -hmm. But because of the next thing you do okay let's say we come to america now you're on a big show or you do a you big get black film. panther you do a three you black get, panthers you get black panther but now now it's only the fifth highest grossing film yeah, in right. the world you're like Ooh. i want to be i want to be number one again yeah, right. it keeps on growing and and whatever you do you're going to keep on trying to to pursue that so hopefully you'll never find what you're looking for otherwise yeah. what's the point like of, should of living going, it should know? keep mm -hmm. going there's a book i read and they were like you know, the reason why we feel like, you know, once you achieve something and you thought it was going to feel so great and amazing, the reason why you still feel like, ah, man, this is not it, there's more. Mm -hmm. It's like, think of it as a circle and there's like layers on layers on layers. When you, when you achieve something, you're actually killing off one layer. Mm -hmm. And the more you kill off things, you're getting closer and closer to purpose. Right. You get what I'm saying? And that's going to take a very long time. You don't just get that. You know, mm -hmm. so so I feel like it 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 should go on that way where mm. it's just more, more, more. We wouldn't be here if we found what we've been looking you know? for. So even even that, what is you guys' purpose? Do you guys know? Do you have now? a defined purpose? purpose? I have a I have a defined mission and purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's why I said it's it's very hard to put it in words because it's long, it's literally a page long. I have mm -hmm. a page long that says, "Hey, I'm gonna be." This, 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 and that, this is mm. what I'm going to do. And through that, you know, the world is going to evolve and flourish because of my work and what right. I've provided to it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, I do have a mission and purpose. You have a mission. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know okay. something that detailed, <laughs> um, but I've always lived my life um, kind of with the purpose of, of always trying, mm. always mm. trying. Whatever that means is like if you want to, if you if you want to be on this show, then actually try, mm -hmm. put in the work. If it doesn't work out, mm -hmm. cool. If you want to go to America, then actually do that. Try yeah. go to America and the see biggest, what happens. The biggest yeah. risk is not trying. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, you know? So just try, just actually try. Yeah. Well, let's keep on trying, baby. Let's keep 2024 on trying, to 2025. <laughs> yeah, yes, hey, thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you guys it was so much. Pleasure. Thank you guys. And, you know, yes, we look man. forward to has, you know partying up in here in America with you guys. So, yeah, yeah, maybe let uh, let us just make some money first. <laughs> <laughs> let's just make some money, but then we'll stick you. Thank you guys so much. Oh, Thanks, okay. bro.